So welcome back to my shop. I'm Brian, of course. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use your CNC machine to make custom t-shirts. So first, I'm gonna give you an overview of the whole process. One, you have to have a couple, couple items with your CNC machine. First off, you're gonna need, and this is critical, a vacuum table, okay? I built my own. There's lots of designs out there, but if you wanna check out how I built mine, I'll have a link in the description box. You can check that out. But you're gonna need a vacuum table. Two, you're gonna need an attachment to hold your fabric marker to your CNC machine. I also have a video uh, outlining four different designs that I've designed and built. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description box for that as well. So please go check that out. But you're gonna need this, the way to hold the marker. So let's talk about what supplies you need. You're gonna need, of course, a shirt. These are just cheap gray tees from Michaels, wherever, like five bucks each. Secondly, you're gonna need some fabric markers. I highly recommend this particular brand. Okay, this is stained by Sharpie, the same people who make regular Sharpie markers. Another critical element to this is you're gonna need some peel and stick shelf liner. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's clear or colored. You also need some, some uh, I, I would recommend painter's tape. I'm sure masking tape would, would work as well. And you'll need a couple simple things such as a utility knife and a tape measure or a roller. Now let's just talk about the design process because first you need to have a design to put on your shirt. Whatever program you're using, whether you're downloading artwork, the most important steps to take are in your CAM software. And we're gonna go over that in a little more detail. However, I, I can recommend that with this process using the fabric markers, try and stay away from any highly detailed or very small texts or, or, or very detailed line work. I prefer to use block text for, for the larger, bolder text. And then in the case of something simple like this, this is a single line font. I think it's called Helvetica, one line. And so it's, it's, you, can get a, you can get smaller text with, with crisper detail without the, the words or letters blurring together. Because if you get too small and the text gets too close together, you can have a problem with, you know, the marker kind of bleeds into the fabric. The placement of the, of the design on the shirt is also pretty important. You can just Google it. There's some recommendations as far as how far down a design should start from the hem, say. Or if you're doing a logo that's in the corner of the shirt, there's recommendations where it's located off the sleeve line and the, the top of the shirt. So just check those out before you, you know, waste your time making a shirt and then it, it kind of looks weird. So now once you're in your CAM software, you have your artwork imported, you scale your design appropriately and then, you know, you size your material just to fit around your design. And you set your origin for your CNC machine and for the project dead center of your design. And there's a reason for that. It's because you have to place this on the shirt and you're going to put a reference mark on the shirt and it's a lot easier if the design is centered. If you're gonna use multiple colors for a design, run those as separate tool paths because you have to change the pen. <laughs> so, and also if you're, if you're gonna be doing uh, finer text, you know, do finer text separated from larger text, which these are also done with a quick engrave tool path, <clears throat> meaning that the inside of this is crosshatch filled. And those of you who do you know, woodwork signs, V carving, are very familiar with all that. That's a tool path that's used for this. And again, this is just a profile tool path and the, the tip of the thing is running on center of, of the vectors you select. And it, and it comes out pretty good. But if you're doing fine text like this, your, your detail of your, your text will come it's, it's kind of dependent on how far you set the depth of this here holder. And we'll, we'll show you that ongoing in the video here. But if you go down too far, your text will be wider. Your marker can smudge and drag the material. So you start, to start out with your Z axis set just touching the top of the material, the shirt in this case. And then you run the file and you may get a very thin, uh, thin line. 
that's no problem. You can just adjust your z-axis down, run it again, and it will make your lines bolder. The next step in the process is just prepping the shirt. And we'll go over that, but that's what the shelf paper's for. And, oh, forgot to mention, you might also want to have an iron on handy, you know, borrow one from your better half or unless you do your own ironing, um, you know, to iron out any wrinkles in the shirt. And this is helpful, but not 100% necessary, but it's definitely helpful. Cut a piece of thin plywood or something. Uh, you, you can measure your own shirt. I'm not sure how big this is, but you basically, you pull the shirt down over top of it and it kind of helps you, because uh, you're only dealing with one layer of the shirt then, not both layers of fabric, helps you iron it flat and put that peel and stick liner on the shirt. Okay, now we're into the shirt prep. All right, first thing you do, turn your shirt inside out. You decide which side of the shirt your design is gonna be on. In my case here, we're on the front. So on the back side, well, slide the uh, piece of plywood here up in there. Okay. I said this is where the plywood's helpful. Okay. Now this is the back side of the front of the shirt, and here's you know where you where you may want to iron out any wrinkles you may have. Now we put our shelf liner on, and I've pre-cut a piece of this. Uh, I think it's 14 inches by 14 inches square, which is a little bigger than my design, of course. And I'm going to put it up approximately, you know, make, make sure my design is going to be in this area where I, where I cover this. Okay, so we basically got to peel this back off. And be careful you don't stretch the fabric of the shirt as you do this, because it'll distort your design. I'm getting a little better with this each time I do it. Smooth out any wrinkles, looks good. All right, now we are ready to turn this back around. Yes, you remove this. Carefully turn your shirt back around. And then we're over to the machine. You can see my vacuum table here. I have blocked off, you know, dammed all the air holes, except for the approximate area where I have the shelf liner on the back side of the shirt. And that's so that we, we pull the most vacuum we can to actually hold the fabric tight. Okay, so here my shirt, I'm going to line up. And you can kind of feel the, you can kind of feel the uh, shelf liner in the back side of the shirt. So what you want to do is get your fabric and your shelf liner centered in that area where you're going to be pulling the vacuum. And you want to get your shirt lined up nice and square to your your machine bed so that your design is you know uh squared up on your shirt so to speak that looks that looks pretty good okay all right now i'm going to turn on the vacuum i hope you can still hear me good okay so here in order to get the placement of the design in the shirt you can either measure or you can make a little quick cardboard template. This is the size of my design roughly, like a block of the design. Three and a half inches high, 12 inches wide. There's the origin in my cam file. So I'm gonna locate this where I want it, smooth out any wrinkles, locate this where I want it in the shirt. Uh, Basically there, about two and a half inches down from the hem. Squared up isn't important, it's the center really. It's kind of a visual aid. All right, now we put in a pen. And uh, just a quick tip. If you're gonna do a design that needs a lot of ink, just make sure your ink level is appropriate in your pen. You don't wanna run out of ink while you're doing a design. Ask me how I know. So anyway, let's get the pen in here. Set our X, Y origin. That's pretty good. 
Now we need to set our Z axis. And uh, here's what I've been doing. It, 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 it's pretty, it makes it a little easier. Put a piece of masking tape somewhere off of your design to set your Z axis. You want something impervious so that as you bring it down, you're not leaving an ink spot on, on the shirt. Now I'm going to bring it till it's just, the tip is just touching and zero out my Z. And you can leave that there. Now I brought this to, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you this is going to be a pretty thin line and we're actually going to go over it a second time. Boulder. So I'm going to pull up the file and we're going to run that. Now we're going to go over that one more time, but we're going to adjust our z-axis down a little bit. And we're going to repeat that same program. And that's going to give us a little bolder line. And that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to run the second program with the same Z depth. And this is the main text of this. It's a quote is what the shirt is. I just picked a simple one for this demonstration. At the end of this video, I'll show you something a little more complicated with some color in it, give you an idea what, what else you can do. And if we're not happy with the thickness of this text as well, because it's a little bigger, we're just going to adjust the z-axis down a little bit more and make the line a little bit bolder. And I'm, I'm running the machine at a pretty slow feed rate and that's just so you can like follow along a little bit easier. You can go faster if you want. All right, I think that come out pretty good. I will show you another, at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about a different style of vacuum system for this table. And I will also show you a time-lapse version of a design that's got more color, shapes, you know, more design to it. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Stick around for the ending. Let me show you a quick tip while that's running. In order to monitor your ink levels in your pen, this is covered with a paint. Take a razor blade, scrape off some of that white paint on the marker. Then you can see your ink level. Oh, and another tip, have a beverage handy. This takes a while.
Okay, so now it may be obvious why I wanted to talk about a different vacuum table system. If you can see these dots right here that are a lighter color, that is where the shirt material and the, the peel and stick shelf liner are sucked down just a little bit into one of those vacuum table holes. Those are quarter inch holes, one inch on center. And that pattern telegraphs through. Now it's not a real big deal to take the pen and darken them in. They kind of blend right in. At least when it dries. But what I'm going to do, since I'm having so much fun with this, is I'm going to make a new vacuum table that is obviously smaller because that's all I need but it'll also either, ha either have a bunch of smaller diameter holes closer together probably like 330 seconds at the most an eighth maybe a three eighths on center or I'm going to use a bleeder board system I haven't decided yet I have a feeling the bleeder board will be better but let me see if I can get a hold of some material for that. But that's what I wanted to say about the vacuum table.